June 25th, I've been um, just really reflecting on this outcome with Roe versus Wade and someone put a post on Instagram about, you know, if you don't choose neutrality, it feeds the oppressor. And I sat with that. And, and, and I even went to bed asking him, like, is that, like, how? <laughs> you know, like, just trying to understand, right? I mean, this whole process for me has been, I'm entertaining these ideas, right? I'm adopting, I'm learning these new ways of thinking and doing life. I'm testing it out, right? There's an element that, to a certain degree, I'm also testing this out for myself, right? And so how do you how do you resolve that? How do you resolve not taking action, right? Not being a bystander. That's what I learned in, in class, right? How do you find the balance between taking action in a way where you're still not doing what the other person is doing, right? It's so gray. It's so gray. I was, it's so funny. So yesterday I had a client, he's on the spectrum. And there's this level of awareness that he has about his abilities and limitations. Chooses not to use the word disability and instead says, I have a condition. I said, okay. And so all of this is just letting me know right? How, how he feels about himself and how he views himself. And so we were talking about mistakes. He had made a simple mistake, uh, booking some tickets. He just didn't put, you know, a, a code that was going to save him some money. But there's no refund on the ticket, so he can't, but he was just so fixated on it. The whole session, like, he, and then we would distract him and then he'd come back to it. And I could tell it was still bothering him. But it's rooted into this, right, bigger belief of mistakes and, and having to be perfect, right? And his perception that people who have a normal IQ, as if we taught, he brought it up, he's like, and it's because he was often compared to other people growing up. He's often compared to other people growing up. So he got this ingrained knowing awareness, I'm not like other people, right? And, and so then that creates resentment, right? It, it fuels emotions and, and how you be yourself. So we've been working on being flexible. We've been working on accepting change as part of the process, that change is the one constant in life. So today, and yesterday, actually, now that I think about it, was the first session where he was actually, there was more of this inner working that he was doing Whereas before, it's like he would accept what I would say, but then, and I knew he, I knew it was in there, but he wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. And, and he would show me and he would tell me and I'd say, okay, you know, like I'm, I'm going where you're going. And we talked about mistakes. And then he said, are you telling me that I have to be, I have to, what did he say? Oh, so it was, he worded it so wonderfully. Are you saying that I have to be lenient with mistakes? And and then we got into the conversation of of one extreme versus another. Like the law, oh the criminal system is that he used like something like that. And I said, it's it's it depends on the situation, is what I told him. I said there's some situations that require more action than others. Others, we just have to let it go, right? A mistake is a mistake. It's on the spectrum of mistakes, right? In terms of the actions that we take. And so I said, but people in prison, right? People who are incarcerated currently in the system that we live in, there's still opportunities, hopefully, depending on the funding, right? Um, 
to 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 make better choices right to learn from from those experiences not to say that everybody does but the potential is always there and and so then i said and then there's other mistakes like you miss the code right to, to get however much off your ticket and you you can choose to stay there it's just not going to feel good and so you say it's okay some mistakes i have to let go i have to accept and 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 then there's everything in the middle so he was trying to wrap his mind around it because he, he i could see him working at it and then he would ask questions and then we'd get distracted and then he'd come to it and ask questions so it's really fascinating to see his thought process, but it got me thinking, right? It, in terms of what's happening right now in the world and, and, you know, people picking sides, right? People picking sides. This word force, force, force is force regardless of what side you're on. <sighs> but then how do you navigate that in a world where it's, force is everywhere regardless of where you turn it's everywhere so fortunately you know esther hicks came out with a great video this morning <laughs> that answered my question but i i sat with that a little bit and i'm like yeah okay i knew that okay i need to take my attention away from it right the more attention i give it the more energy I give it, the more momentum I give it, the more it perpetuates, right? So I shift my attention elsewhere. What makes me feel good? And hopefully the more and more people who do that, we shift our attention to what makes us feel good. It, we, we slow down that momentum that we've all contributed to, to some degree or another, right? With our emotions, with our actions. And, and, and it slows down enough to where we shift the direction of the momentum into something else. That's, that's the only thing that I... And it's, it, it's a, a matter of being okay with that process. Being okay that it's going to take long. Being okay that we're not there yet. We're not there now. And so then, you know judgment i'm preparing myself for that that people are going to judge because i'm not partaking in 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 the force forces because it's it's both sides right that be in the current moment but that's at a that's at a systemic level right that's that's in a bigger level right but then at an individual level Right? At an individual level, when it's happening right in front of you, that's different. That's different. The, the intervention is different. That's all it is. It makes sense, right? It totally makes sense. The intervention is going to be different when it's right in front of you. When, it, when it's in, So it's, it's not to say that you're going to shift your attention when it's happening right in front of you. In terms of your element of control, that's what it is. It's, it's assessing the situation. What do you have control over? Right? What do you have control over? And in this moment, with what's in front of me, so just because I believe that in a bigger sense, right? Because it's not something tangible that I can, like, literally, you know, get the people in power and be like, no, 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 you're going to do this. No, I can't do that. So that's why my attention has to go elsewhere on a bigger scale. But if I'm looking at it at a systems level, individually, right, within my pod, within my, my sphere of influence, right, what I have control over is how I treat other people. That's what it is. It's, just, it's systemic. So then I, I focus my attention on what I have more control of, which is more with myself and then th those closer to me. That's how I do it. That's, that's how we do it. So what does that mean? That means if, if I'm seeing an assault happen in front of me, I intervene because I can in that moment. I can stop it. So 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 being aware of that, balancing that out, right, with 
with in front of me, I can stop it, right? I can help protect. I can help uh, balance. I can help balance that situation out. Wherever the imbalance of power and control is, I can intervene and help balance it out. If it's within my reach, right? If it's within my, that I can do something about it and then I move on. I don't sit with it. I don't, you know, I do what I need to do and then I move on. But I don't bring that back into my words. It's done. It, it, I accepted it for the reality that it took. The, 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 place it, the place that it took in my life, whether I was an active participant or I a bystander, did what I needed to do, accept it for what it is, and then each person is going to kind of move on depending on how it, they got impacted, right? So then that path will look slightly different, but that's okay. It's still about getting to that point where it's like, this happened, and for each person that that process is going to just look a little different. That makes sense. That makes me feel better. Cause I was sitting with that, I'm like, how, how, how can I be okay with that, right? When it is, it feels like it is out of my grasp, but at the same time, it's not. And, and, and I don't want to not say anything, right? And not speak up. It's how you handle it. It's how you address it, right? It's, it's, it would be different if I'm having a conversation with someone and I'm trying to force my beliefs on them versus just accept them that that's just what they believe in okay, I'm going to do what I'm doing, stay in my lane. But if something, it's like if I'm driving a car, right? If I'm on my lane, you're on your lane. But if something interrupts my lane, right, without me expecting it, right, an assault, an earthquake, right, uh, an intruder on my lane, I have to stop. I have to address it when it's in my lane. I address it and then I move on. So the big thing though is judgment, judgment. If I'm on my lane and I see my neighbor on their lane and they decide to do something, it's still within close proximity. But if I'm on the five freeway, right? And, and I hear of an accident on the 10 freeway, <laughs> I'm not gonna go out of my way to go on that lane. Does that make sense? That makes sense. I, I'm not gonna exit the freeway to go onto the 10 where that accident is. And put my two cents in it. <laughs> that makes no sense. <laughs> I love free. I love this whole freeways. Freeways work. <laughs> Thank you. Freeways work. That makes sense. Right? That makes sense. Now the whole freeway system starts crumbling. Right? Then wherever you are at, you, you, you do your part. Wherever you are at though. It's not, it doesn't mean I'm going to go and travel over there. <laughs> Down south to the, you know, the six little paper or wherever, right? Stay in my lane. Stay in the lane. That makes sense. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. I hope that helps. I mean, it, it's helping me right now just as I'm thinking it out loud, but I, if it, if it makes sense for anybody, I hope it helps. Hi. My name is Yubi, and in case you haven't figured it out, this footage is capturing my experience as I learn to navigate my personal spiritual awakening. Um, I am learning that this experience is unique to each one of us. Um, in whatever way we believe we are embracing living our truth, this just happens to be my journey. Um, and despite me having a graduate degree and a license in clinical social work, this by no means is intended to replace any type of mental health advice. This is just me on a personal level, uh, documenting my experience, shedding light on the truth that I am learning and discovering for myself, um, and really inviting you along for the ride. Um, if by some <laughs> magical chance 
you find this content to be helpful in any way, shape, or form, please click the like button, you know, share the message, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I have an Instagram account, a personal one, and one specifically for this channel that you're more than welcome to check out. Um, I'm an open book. Um, I have also created t-shirt um, t-shirt designs. I'm wearing my favorite one right now, which is the North Node um, uh, design, um, but I have that and other things uh, that you can look at um, inspired by this process and journey. Um, and I have the link in the description box as well as in the about section of my YouTube um, channel. So you're more than welcome to check those items out. Um, any type of support is, you know, right <laughs> um again if, if you find this content really helpful or meaningful sometimes when we um take that step and, and, and be vulnerable you know with, with showing what's inside our hearts and what's really our truth we realize that we're much more connected um than, than what we thought we were and so um i hope that um as i'm living this experience it, and that you find some type of truth for yourself or, or find some type of um, ability to heal in some way just by relating, you know, just just by knowing that you're not alone. That really has been my goal with, with this process, um, not just um, being able to connect with others, but really for my own healing. Um, it's definitely been a therapeutic experience and a very creative one for, for myself. So I thank you and um, I wish you all the best and you know, we'll see what else um, comes next for me.